Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines Millions of Indian workers and farmers take part in historic strike. Greek trade unions hold strike against government mismanagement of COVID 19. Iran nuclear deal Hassan Rouhani makes offer to Joe Biden. And Saudi women's rights activist Lojain Al Hatlul to face trial in terrorism court. In our first story, India witnessed the biggest organized strike ever in human history with over 250 million workers and farmers along with their allies among students, feminists and civil society groups taking part in a countrywide strike. The strike coincides with India's Constitution Day and came in the background of an unprecedented attack on workers' rights and farmers' protections by the right-wing government of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. The strike was organized by the Coalition of Workers and Farmers Movements with 10 national trade, trade union confederations and umbrella groups. Meanwhile, the All India Kisan Sangarsh Samiti, which is the All India Farmers Coordination Committee, that consists of over 200 peasants groups across India also took part. Women's rights groups, students' unions and various civil society organizations participated. The strike received support from left parties and several opposition groups. Some of the key demands contained in the 12-point charter put forward by the organizers include the withdrawal of a series of legislations recently passed by the Modi government, which repeal key labor and farm price protections. They also sought a rollback in recent disinvestment policies in major government-owned enterprises, the implementation of existing welfare schemes for rural workers and expanding welfare policies to aid the masses affected by the economic fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic. Thousands of farmers along with members of trade union groups and other movements from across India also led a rally to the capital Delhi. The rally was met with fierce repression from the Delhi police who made use of a blockade, baton charges and water cannons to stop the march. Eventually, the blockade was breached. In a similar confrontation with the authorities, Workers and farmers groups brought major metropolitan cities like Kolkata and Mumbai to a standstill with sit-ins organized on key transport routes. The industrial and mining belt across the east and central India also witnessed a shutdown. In our next story, the Greek working class took out a massive countrywide strike as well on November 26, that's today, demanding safety and resources in various sectors of work to fight COVID-19. The strike action was joined by sections from all walks of life, including factory workers, teachers, health workers, youth, students, professionals and government employees. The workers took out limited demonstrations adhering to COVID-19 safety protocol in various cities across Greece following the strike action at their workplaces. Strikes took place at factories, offices, hospitals, schools, etc. In Athens, the workers demonstrated in front of the Ministry of Labour. The trade unions on strike have demanded benefits without terms and conditions to all those who are unemployed. They have also called for the revoking of all illegal terminations that have taken place during COVID-19 period and ending further redundancies. In addition, they are demanding that there be no cuts in employment rights and a moratorium on bank payments be provided along with free electricity, gas, water, communication, services, etc. for workers in quarantine. The Communist Party of Greece, KKE, expressed solidarity with the workers' strike and took part in organizing the strike as well. In our next story, Iranian President Hassan Rouhani offered to go back to all its commitments under the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, JCPOA, or the Iran nuclear deal, provided the US President-elect Joe Biden agrees to join back and lift all sanctions. Rouhani was addressing a press conference after a crucial cabinet meeting in Tehran on November 25th, that's yesterday. He said that both countries can go back to their respective status prior to the Trump presidency if President-elect Biden has the political will to do so. Rouhani has repeated the Iranian offer several times after the results in the US presidential elections became clear. A few days ago, the country's foreign minister, Jawad Zarif, also had repeated the offer. Donald Trump had unilaterally withdrawn from the deal in May 2018. The deal which had paid the, paved the way for lifting of all sanctions against Iran in 2015 was signed by Iran and five other countries, China, Russia, the UK, France and Germany besides the US. In return for the end of international sanctions, Iran had agree, agreed to low-grade its nuclear program. Since the reimposition of the US sanctions, Iran, citing JCPOA provisions, has stopped adhering to some of the commitments under the deal. Joe Biden, during his election campaign, has promised to rejoin the deal after assuming office. And finally, Saudi Arabian women's rights activist Lojain Al Hatlul, who has been imprisoned since May 2018, will stand trial in a specialized criminal court setup for terrorism related offenses. This was according to statements by her family. Her younger sister, Lina Al Hatlul, said in a tweet on Wednesday that Saudi authorities had transferred her case to the special terror court, citing lack of jurisdiction by a regular criminal court. Lina Al Hatlul said that her sister looked extremely frail during a court appearance and that her body was shaking uncontrollably. Her voice was very soft and shaky. Despite being in such a bad physical condition, Lodjain still managed to read the four-page defense to a judge, her other sister Ali Al Hatlul said in a tweet. Earlier on Tuesday, Lina had termed the court appearance as a sham and a show trial, which has been arbitrarily resumed by government authorities after Lodjain spent 900 days in prison. 
The activists had launched a second hunger strike on October 26 to protest against prison authorities denying her the right to maintain regular contact with her family. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah, cantar, que vamos a triunfar, a avanzar.